Hello, everybody, and welcome to Libromancy, a podcast about the magic of books. I'm Josh, and today I'm talking about Hidden by Benedict Jacka, the fifth book in the Alex Ferris series. So let's hide with the magic of books. Again, this is a pretty standard fare for this book. They are fun. They're exciting. I, this one, I feel like, is the start. Well, I've said that on the last one, too, that the last one's kind of like, now we can see where things are starting to go. And I feel like this is definitely a slow burn continuation of this, that like we see some more pieces fall into place, and now we just need to see where those pieces are going to land. So again, I like this book. I think in a, some non-spoilery stuff, like the characters in this book are phenomenal. Not all of them, but the ones that we know and love, we're seeing new sides to them. We're seeing reasons behind why they do things certain ways. We're seeing more character growth and changing. That's always a good thing. The atmosphere of the book, this one, it's not... You don't really get that feeling of like a lived-in place because in a non-spoiler way, most of the book takes place kind of in a non-lived-in place. So it just kind of makes sense that that's how it would go. I feel like his writing has continued to steadily improve, you know, bit by bit. We're seeing more things. We're seeing more ways that he is challenging his characters. I've never felt like there's a backslide. His prose remains easy and accessible at the same time being there and serving a purpose. But every one of these books, I have a hard time putting them down after I pick them up. I I get into them and I start reading and I care so much that I'm just like, I want to know how he's going to get out of this situation or what situation is he going to get himself in this time that he has to get himself out or how's he going to help people in. This one is, you know, we're, we're going to still be dealing with some of those issues from the last book. And so it's really interesting to see the way things go. And I did like that he explained a little bit more, uh, you know, just about how the dark mages interact. Because I'm sure like you, uh, let's just get into some spoilers here for a second. It's just we're going to go into spoilers and just say, I'm sure that like you, I've been wondering like, well, why don't, aren't the, why are there... Why aren't there a lot more fights between dark mages? And it's like, well, the dark mages realize that, like, yes, strength makes right, but if you have to deal with some people eventually, like, you're going to be okay. So you have, you're going to have, there's no one else going to be deal with, and then you're going to be stuck by yourself and overpowered. So, you know, they get it. And I like that Alex's knowledge of how black mages or dark mages operate really came into play and he's like this is what i need to do this is how i can figure this out and fix this so let's talk about the plot a little bit the plot of this story is that uh and gets annie gets kidnapped again you know from before like before her past just somebody sneaks into her apartment grabs her and gates out nobody knows where or how she's been running a clinic out of her apartment since she uh left alex doesn't want to talk with him, still is very, very, no, you're bad, you're evil, I want nothing to do with you. And it's just like, Annie, come on, get over it. Like, yeah, you did like send those kids to their death. But truthfully, they weren't really looking for a reason to not fight him to the death. They wanted it. They were there. It's an Alex or a, it's an Alex or the Night Stalkers, you know, from the last book. What did you want him to do? You want him to be better? Well, I mean, being better is tough. I mean, how do you figure out a way out of that situation? I think she's got, obviously, she has a a wrong view of the light mages. Or maybe we have a wrong view of the light mages. Because we only ever see it from Alex's perspective. But truthfully, the light mages, like, most of the light mages aren't any better than the dark mages. They just don't come out and do it in the open. They say... I mean, Levistus, a head council member, was like, you're going to go get the Fate Weaver for me, you know, from the first book. And Alex was like, uh, what happens if I say no? Oh, the air elemental comes and eats me and kills me for and destroys me. Yes, of course I'll do that. Like, there's no... The light mages are not any better than the dark mages. They're just better at hiding it and being more political with it. So... Let's just talk about Annie, though, because she is such a great character. We to learn about what she went through, that she was forced to to kill people in an arena, person by person, until she was very good at it, until she could to survive. And then that's before she was able to break free with Varian. And that's why she doesn't want to become that person. She knows that she's like, I was slipping. You know, eventually I just, I wouldn't care. And she's like, I don't want to be that person. I wanted to be better like you. And he's like, you think I'm better? Like, I'm just trying to survive. I just don't want to die. That's why the Night Stalkers, you know, had to get taken care of. Because they wouldn't stop coming after me. You know, I was trying to do my best. And he's like, yeah, but you should have been better. And it's like, yeah, should have. 
could have, would have. I wish I could, right? And I love that Annie's just like, she's so afraid of not her power, but of being a bad person. And, you know, she imposes on herself, like, I have to heal all these people, you know, without complaint. I have to be so mature. I have to be so good. You know, take the pacifist route to try and make up for all the lives that she's hurt. And that's why she won't, you know, use her magic offensively against anybody or tries not to. And it's like, yeah, Annie, I get it. Like, I get where you're coming from. Like, it sucks. But I mean, I don't necessarily, I've never been forced to kill people using magic over and over again to weak to weaken my will so that I, you know, as a slave. But in the beginning, like, I think everybody can sympathize a little bit with how every, all the other apprentices and the light mages just whisper around her and, and rumors that, oh, you're a dark mage. You did this. You did that. Like, it, it literally has any done anything ever to any of them? No. But she gets so much crap about it because people are unwilling to, like, look, listen, and learn. They're just like, oh, she's just a horrible person because she was with a dark mage once. You know, he kidnapped, you know, doesn't matter that he kidnapped her and forced her into it. She should have just died or just not had it happen to her. That's it. She should have just not had it happen to her and then she'd be fine. Like, come on. The light mages are just the worst. So, but I love, I love her struggle to be a better person to accept, try it at the end. Uh, Alex counsels her to like accept the hidden, the, the hidden self, you know, inside of her that she has locked away. The part that's like, I do like to hurt people and I don't like to be nice and proper and prim all the time. And I want to say what I think, which is funny because she thinks, you know, she thinks all these things. But she's like, yeah, she thinks those things. She just never says them. And I just I will say them here in herself. Um, so it's so funny. It's like, yeah, it's, it's funny. She is in Sagash's uh, shadow realm, but it's not by Sagash. It's actually by Crystal, which is hilarious because Crystal, the mind mage from two books ago i believe in taking when they are taking adepts and then eventually the life mage any to perform the immortality thing which i'm gonna guess is not really gonna work but i'm not gonna tell them that and she is working her mind magic on sagash's apprentice apprentices and it's just so funny because the whole time sonder has to keep the investigation focused on crystal because she's someone that the, the light mages and the light council care about Versus Annie, which they don't. But if Crystal did it, then it's okay for them to come back. And everybody's like, yeah, it was probably just Sagash, but it was Crystal, you know, heavy wing. And then it turns out it actually was Crystal and Sagash had nothing to do with it, you know, until the very end. He's like, oh, well, I got her back. Like, now I'll just keep her forever. You know, you can go, Varys. And he's like, uh, no, I'm going to go out with her. So I love that. I loved Sonder. <laughs> Again, Sonder, come on. You're facing the same thing. Have you ever hung out with uh, Alex Ferris? And he was like, hey, you know what would be fun? Let's go out and murder a bunch of kids. Or like, let's just go be mean and like hurt people in general. No, perhaps not. He's never done that. Are you sure, Sonder? Did you use your time site? Did you see what he did that one day you were gone? No, because of course he's never been like that because that's not who he is. That may be who he was, but that doesn't make him a bad person. Makes him... You know, a real person who did some bad things that he's ashamed of. Did he lie to you about it? No. So, what's your big deal, Sonder? You remember, oh wait, was it the first book when you were the Fate Weaver? And he came back for you after killing the uh, the Fate Weaver and the other people in there who were trying to kill him? Oh, wait a minute. Pretty sure it was. And he, he did what he needed to do to survive and to save you. And it was cool then. But as soon as it's against people that you don't feel like deserved it, even though they were the ones gunning for his death, suddenly it's not okay. The light mages wouldn't step in. You tried, he tried. They didn't care. Oh, the light mage, they're only going after dark mages. That's a dark mage problem. Alex Varys is clearly a dark mage since, you know, he only renounced him for 10 years and hasn't done anything remotely bad or like dark magey in a while. Granted, yes, two light mages died around him. But again, don't gun for him, and you won't be in trouble. That's pretty simple. Uh, so, just, uh, Sonder, come on, get your head out of your butt. Just, like, figure it out. Realize, hey, wait a minute. You know, Alex has never been anything but truthful to me. He's never been mean. And I like that Alex calls him out and is like, leave off, Sonder. Like, figure it out. Either I'm a horrible dark mage, and you shouldn't interact with me at all, or I'm your friend, and I'm a good guy, and I made some mistakes. Come on. And... The, you know, we're going to drop Sonder here for a second with uh, Keeper Caldera, who's just funny. Uh, Richard is officially back. He comes and visits. 
Alex in the Shadow Realm, Sagasha Shadow Realm, and he offers him and Annie a job. And it's like, oh boy, that is interesting. Like, what, you know, what's his plan? We have no idea. We we know he went to a different world, and now he's back. We have no idea. I mean, Alex didn't even know what he was up to when he was working for him, really. He knew just bits and pieces. So, like, I am so interested to see where the end of Richard is. Like, is Richard going to just destroy the designation of light mages and good mages, like mages and dark mages, and just kind of be like, they're just, everybody's just a mage. Either you do good or you do what you want. Is like... I don't know. I just don't know. Because I haven't... I've read, I think, one or two more books after this. And I don't remember anything that happens past that. Because I haven't read it, obviously. And I barely remember what happens in the next two. So, like, Richard's back and Alex is terrified of him. You know, rightly for good reason. Although, we never, ever see... Like, we see him, like, stop Alex from interfering with his plans and locking him up. But, like, we actually don't really ever see him do bad things. We see him let bad things happen by inaction or by not stopping things, right? The whole Catherine thing and killing her, you know, draining her life for the teleportation spell is bad. You're right. But I mean, he's never been like overly brutal like other dark mages have been. So that's just one thing. And I love that there's a house reference in here. It was so funny. Sonder starts writing on a whiteboard and he writes, you know, suspects and victim and stuff. And then uh, Luna comes in and she's like, maybe it's lupus. And Varium's like, no, it's never lupus. And it, that was so funny. It was a little light crack. Like, you blink and you miss it. But it was pretty, it was good there. And I love uh, the Blink Fox that he that he rescues is just like, hey, okay, Blink once for yes and twice for no. And it blinks twice. But he's like, wait a minute. I just asked you a different question. Like, you, you do know that. And the fox gives him that fox look like, haha, I'm a fox. I'm going to do whatever I want. Like, you can't control me. And then the fox comes and lives with him at the end. And he's like, what the heck, fox? I thought you were going to go, like, do what you wanted. You know, because it's a it's like a human level intelligent fox, right? And the fox is just like, no, nah, no. Nah. And then it, like, teleports to the door and is like, hey, open this up and give me some food. And it's like, no, like, go somewhere else. So the fox is like, come on, come on, look at the food. See the food over there? Like, there's food in the fridge. I know it. Like, I want it. Just so funny. Uh, so I'm excited. I, I'm really excited for where this series is going. I really have no idea what's going to happen in the end. I'm excited to watch Alex and Annie, which I like that they're starting to get together a little bit. Annie is like, hey... Can I get your help setting up some wards? Can I maybe stop by? Like, they're talking again. She's like, okay, you know, you weren't the worst person in the world. You did some bad stuff. I've done some bad stuff. Maybe we together we can work our way past it. So I like that. I'm so excited for, you know, everything about it. But I think that's going to be it. That's going to wrap up my discussion for Hidden, the fifth book in the Bene- in the Alex Vera series by Benedict Jacka. So thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks to David Hillwitz for the intro and outro music. You know, please like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts from. And remember, to hide with the magic of books.